The White House press office said the president's announcement was based on a military decision and not meant to be anything more than that. President Trump made the decision two days ago. Later, he informed Defense Secretary Jim Mattis, who was on vacation, that the president uh, announced it to the world after that. He reasoned that the military could no longer be burdened by the disruption caused by transgender troops. All right, uh, here's more than just an interested observer to this. Retired Staff Sergeant Shane Ortega is with us, a transgender man who served in the Army's 25th Infantry Division. He's been through three combat tours. Good morning to you. Where were you? Where did you serve? Uh, I served in Afghanistan, and then I did two tours in Iraq. Is there anything about your status that made it difficult for you or the people with you? Um, definitely not. I think, if anything, my team was actually very... Uh happy to find out the news because I had been such a significant part of that team and uh, being part of a special operations community you know that small groups we need a lot of uh, interaction and a lot of honesty between the members. What do you mean happy to find out? I'm sorry. Happy to that I could actually be my authentic self. I see while you were in the military yes. they were happy. What, where were you when you found out about this tweet the president sent out? So I actually was here in the Los Angeles area and I was awoken at 5 a.m. in the morning uh, from a service member serving on the East Coast who actually called me in a state of panic. And what did you feel? Uh, it felt like the floor had dropped out, um, to be quite honest, and I felt that uh, Donald Trump was not showing his respect and, and uh, appreciating the military service members that we have actively serving. Did you have any sense that this was coming? Honestly, I did. I had put out a tweet about this particular predicament and this situation happening back in July th on the 13th. Um, the, he's saying it's the, the generals, that he's taking advice from the generals. Is there anything that you believe that that is the overwhelming or prevailing theory in the military. Absolutely not. If Donald Trump was taking the advice of the generals that are acting uh, right now in the DOD capacity, he would have read the RAND report and he would have read the Williams Institution report, which were both commissioned by the United States military to inform them on the implementation process for transgender troops and the actual fiscal costs. I don't know if you can answer this. Uh, the RAND report says, I can't remember, between 1,500 and 6,000 transgender people in the Army. I think they uh, say 2,300. The, the, 2300. Uh, yes, the baseline. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nobody really knows the answer. William says 15,000. That's a big difference. Have you any sense, did you run across a lot of people like that? Um, I did start a uh, support group back in 2008 for trans military service members. At that time, I had about 1,200 people in my particular support group that were actively serving. 1,200? Yes. From all over the world? No, uh, from the United States, yes. Well, I mean, but were they stationed all yes, over the world? Yes, stationed all over the world. Yes. Uh, the estimate, I would say, is, let's just be really honest. In this atmosphere, in this political climate, a lot of people are not going to come out of the not closet. Sure. So those estimations are never going to be an exact right. number. Let's Shame. get down to the day-to-day -day reality. There are a lot of people who uh, are uh, Comfortable, unused to. Not bad people. They're just not used to this. this oh no, they're not bad people. It changed for them to adjust to to you, for instance. What is that process like? I mean, let's just be quite clear. It's a shock and awe from somebody who could go from a smooth face to having a beard. Yeah. Uh, we all need a slight adjustment period. But I think at the core of our humanity, if we are in a foxhole together and we are both taking the time to risk our lives to be shot at together, that we will f come to some sort of do, compromise. Do they need Did to you know? transition while you were in the military? Yes, yes okay, actively so you, serving. You went in, and how long before you were in did uh, you transition? So I began my transition in 2009, and I was retired uh, this last July of 2016. And, you, and, any bad moments? Yeah. Uh, the only bad moments were honestly at the end of my uh, military service where it became a political bureaucratic issue mm -hmm. where I would say the government was trying to police my gender. But within my actual unit, all of my leadership gave me exemplary uh, marks and uh, I had been a top performer. Did, did you have to go to, I'm sorry, Liz, did you have to go to an extra step to let them know that you had their back? Uh, I've kind of always been an overachiever and an athlete, so I wouldn't say anything more than I already had uh -huh. <laughs> in my bag of tricks, I guess you could say. But uh, I did have to ensure the confidence of my chain of command when talking to the government and talking to news uh, stations and things like that about the capacity of trying to push this legislation. I mean, let's just be quite clear. Uh, people in the Army kind of thought I was trying to change and radicalize the world. I wasn't trying to change right. that. I just wanted to serve our country, serve our nation, and honor, honor our citizens the best way I could. Shane, let's talk about the cost, because the President specifically pointed to the medical costs. There are Congress people who are saying, look, we don't want to pay for the health care for transitioning while people are in the military. Okay. How do you respond to that? Well, the defense budget is $600 million. I think the American people don't know that it's quite that large. Uh, the actual cost 
uh, annually to take care of the entire forces of trans citizens is only $1.4 million, and that's an approximation annually. So it's pretty much a nominal cost of, compared to the defense go budget. Back again. The defense budget is what? $600 million. Million dollars? Million. You're way low. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. It's that's the last report. It's yeah. be that's way the last low. report I saw proposed uh, for the When NBA. we've heard they spend four hundred dollars on a hammer, yeah, we, no, no, we're, we're, we're they yeah. do. We do. We do. Yeah. We'll, we'll go back uh, and, and, and check those numbers. I mean, not, it, it's way higher than that. But apparently, it's one tenth of one percent goes toward treatment for transgenders. Yes. So one tenth of one percent, and that means like hormone therapy. So testosterone shots is something that I have to take. That's something that's giving to regular uh, service members who have maybe complications with you know low testosterone levels and things mm -hmm. like that. That's a that's a normal medication that's how much you spend on Viagra. How much do they spend on my ex? Seriously, I think we, do we have five times as much. They spend yeah. five times the cost that it takes for me to take a testosterone shot on yeah. Viagra for the average service member. So is this a pragmatic or a cultural issue, do you think? I think it's a, 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 pra, a cultural issue. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's lack of exposure. Let's just be quite frank. I mean, mm -hmm. the average person may or may not have met a trans person right. who might have disclosed their status to them. But for the last 23 years, if you have been in the United States military, you have worked with a trans or LGB ally because we have all of our major allies in all the four countries who have LGBT inclusive policies. Well, listen, thank you very much, Shane, Shane Ortega, thanks. for coming by. Oh, absolutely. Thanks thank you for, for having me. Oh, I appreciate yeah. it.